what up y'all this is astro dim here looking through uber eats to see if she could get some dessert in this bitch because it's a new moon and i deserve it (laughs) don't you think so like i think so i think i deserve dessert yeah so that's what i'm doing but like i guess i could talk about the new moon with y'all or whatever (laughs) hey this is demi aka astro dim um sitting and chilling with y'all because you know it's my bed in astrology all right so let's talk about um this moon i mean that'd be cool right this new moon popping up on saturday 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 it's exciting stuff so um yeah let's go talk about it i'm gonna just go do my usual spiel and everything and yeah let's start so this new moon is gonna happen May 4th, um, 2019 at 6.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm in the U.S. in the East Coast, so I have to make sure I say Eastern Standard Time so you guys know what the hell I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So, yeah, it'll be at 14 degrees and 11 minutes Taurus. Exactly. But as you know, the energy of the new moon, first of all, happens throughout that day. Um... But it's the most potent at that very moment when the sun and moon are exactly conjunct. But, you know, new moon energy is potent three days before and three days after. So that's why I'm doing this um, reading a little bit early so you guys can do, um, listen to this, marinate on it or whatever. Do your new moon intentions, bring in positivity within your life or whatever. And, you know, get shit popping for you, for yourself, you know? Like, why not? Why not? So, yeah, that's what, that's the, that's the goal here. That's what I'm trying to give y'all or whatever. So, yeah, um, like I was saying, though, it's at 14 degrees, 11 minutes Taurus, right? And so, um, 14, it's interesting because the energy has been like new moons has been in 15 degrees like consistently for months and now it finally booped over to the next degree at 14 degrees um, which is cool um so one and four reduces to five which is really interesting um because like depending on which divination you use five means totally different thing um we again we went from 15 to 14 um we and so you know 15 reduces to six and i was telling y'all that that's connected to like at least the tarot numerology it's connected to reflection not forgetting where you came from giving back soul main energy victory success recognition confidence rite of passage releasing baggage moving away and transitioning to new things you know what i mean so that's what we've been kind of focusing on in the numerology tip but now since 14 reduces to five it seems like the energies of this new moon is going to be more about like well if we focus on more the tarot side of numerology you know the fives you know five of swords five of wands five of cups five of pentacles it's dealing with conflict and confronting conflict head on you know what i mean realizing that i have something i need to express what i'm feeling and i need to address what i'm feeling and i need to confront what i'm feeling truly truly confronting issues head on it's money issues emotional issues arguments literal fighting you know um it's funny how i listed four things and it's connected to the tarot money issues is the five of pentacles emotional issues is the five of cups arguments is the five of swords and literal fighting can be (laughs) the um five of wands so that's that but if you kind of look at like just numerology numerology like real numerology not real numerology but the numbers of numerology just that specific divination you know five is about um having high energy being very expressive um you know it's kind of even connected to the five in astrology the fifth house is all about self-expression as well it's connected to leo so um it's all about you know kind of you uh, expressing yourself fully um and enjoying yourself fully so um this is kind of like these energies are quite opposite of themselves but i think not really because 
kind of confronting your issues head on is a form of expressing yourself. You know, you see an issue, you're like, okay, I need to confront this. I need to express how I'm feeling about the situation. I need to express it through the actions I take. You know what I mean? Like you're you confronting things is a form of self-expression. So I think it is connected, but you know, the, I think the cool thing about it is because five also is kind of have this like enjoyment vibe to it that when you confront these issues and work them out, you'll eventually be happy, you'll eventually be cool, and you'll be able to enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? Hopefully, just hopefully. I'm not a numerologist, you know. So if you like disagree, then you know, just talk to me in a nice way because I'm not, I don't take people like coming at me like well actually (laughs) I don't take that well (laughs) this is annoying to me and I don't take like barking well so just talk to me we'll just talk it out send me a voice note on anchor whatever send me an email the information's on the podcast so you know on a bio or whatever but yeah but that's what I generally am feeling when it comes to the like numerology energy of of this new moon you know So let's talk about, you know, new moon in general. What does a new moon mean astronomically and astrologically? So astronomically, um, literally moon's on one end, sun's on the other end of the earth. And um, actually, no, that's full moon. Sorry. (laughs) Full moon is when the sun and the moon are meeting. Durr. Sorry. But the thing is, it's like, it's not necessarily meeting at like meeting in front of each other. That's an eclipse. Um, that's what you call a solar eclipse. You know what I mean? Um, but it's when, you know, it can be like the sun could be more higher than the moon. The moon could be more higher than the sun, but regardless, they are like, you know, passing each other but may not necessarily pass each other directly in front of each other. You get what I'm saying? And I mean, it's the same thing astrologically, but there's like a deeper meaning to that because astrologically, you know, your moon represents your emotions, how you feel internally, while the sun represents your self-expression and how you react to things. And so the dope thing about it is like, because these energies are close to each other, it's saying that, you know, you, what you feel you are reacting to you know what I mean you're reacting exactly to how you're feeling you know as opposed to the full moon when like energies on one end of the you know spectrum or one end of the um chart wheel the other energies on the other end of the chart wheel so you feel one way but you react another and so it's hard to manifest with that type of energy since you're so conflict you're so conflicted inside but with this energy where you're you're at one with your emotions, your reactions are at one with your emotions and how you feel internally, that means you are so centered and so clear-minded that, you know what, hey, I can manifest things more easier now because I know what I want. So that's kind of the energy that's happening during new moons all the time, okay? So yeah, it's, it's cool energy for sure. Um, now... What does this particular new moon mean in general? Well, again, this new moon's in 14 degrees, um, Taurus. Um, and when I kind of, like, after explaining what new moons are in general, I kind of feel that internally and externally we are um, figuring out ways on how to bring worth into our lives. Emotional worth and material worth. And um, we have the great energy to manifest it, like I mentioned before. You know, it's it's kind of interesting because, like, it seems like that we could be reviewing our life in general and seeing and understanding or going through certain situations that's making us a little bit more aware of our worth. You know what I mean? So we're kind of, like, thinking things through and be like, you know what, I can... I can, you know, strengthen my self-confidence more, self-esteem more. Oh, you know what? Like, uh, maybe I should consider, like, buying property or getting a car or, you know what I mean? Buying certain possessions and buying art. Like, you're really starting to think at a deeper level of, like, having more possessions. Um, Even, like, thinking about changing jobs, getting more money somehow, asking for um, a salary upgrade, something like that where... You're trying to build your worth, but it's not, again, just material worth is, um, you know, emotional worth. How you feel about yourself? Do you deem yourself worthy? Are you giving yourself enough self-love? Are you 
nurturing yourself enough? Are you doing that? This is a good time for you to reflect on if you're doing that and then bringing that energy into your life. You know, second house is very connected to manifestation to me because it's connected to self-worth and self-worth is definitely has a strong connection to manifesting. I give this speech all the time to people who have second house energy or wants me to talk about their second house energy and I'm about to give you that speech right now, okay? Self-worth has a direct connection to material worth. One more time. Self-worth has a great and deep connection to material worth. And I'm going to explain to you why. The reason why you don't have the things that you want in life, and this is including myself, is something that I'm working on. I have North Node in the second house, so I'm working on this, right? <laughs> The reason why you don't have certain things in your life is because you low-key don't feel like you deserve it, all right? So that's why sometimes it's good for people to work hard because when they're working hard and they're doing things and they're busting their ass, they're actually feeling like, you know what? I feel like I deserve it now when it comes to them. But you don't have to do that. That's very seven of pentacles. Working hard, but, you know, you can definitely work smart instead. More eight of pentacles vibe. But hey, you know, again, I'm Pisces, North Node, you know, of course I'll say that, okay? But, you know, the thing is, though, is that you have to feel that you are worthy of something in order to get it. And when I say feel it, I'm not just thinking about it in a logical sense. I mean, you have to feel this and believe this in your gut, in your soul that, you know what, I am worthy of this thing that I want. So if you want a million dollars a year, right, salary, you have to really work on yourself and build yourself up to make yourself feel that you're worthy. Now, a lot of people do this through working, but you can do this through just working on yourself on an emotional standpoint, doing daily affirmations, reaffirming that, hey, I'm worthy enough of anything I want and the universe will provide, God will provide because I'm a spiritual being and God got my back and I I have the power to control my life. You know, if God gave us free will for a reason, you get what I'm saying? And so again, like, you have to really feel that you're worthy of this thing deep, deep down inside. And you have to kind of reprogram yourself to believe it. And to do that is practicing, like, um, of course, doing daily affirmations, practicing positive speech, like really reprogramming your mind is really good to honestly and I have this issue doing this because I can never keep a routine I can never stay consistent my um, sixth and eleventh house are fucked up so (laughs) it's something I'm working on okay but um you know if you like say like daily affirmations of things that you want at at least 21 days and this is like scientifically proven not the daily affirmation part but the 21 days part if you do anything at 21 days right you will be able to um it'll be like a routine to you and it'll start to like reprogram your mind so think about this saying daily affirmations for 21 days or more reprogramming your mind to believing that hey you know i'm worthy of this thing that i want and watch the opportunity start coming together. Now, I'm not saying that it's just going to drop from the sky onto your lap, but you'll have the opportunities to kind of set yourself up to get the thing that you've been feeling that you're worthy of, to get the thing that you've been wanting, you know? So, you you know, you have to kind of really exude the energy um, of worthiness of the thing that you want in order for you to get it it's a law of attraction law of abundance you know you have to really really reprogram yourself and when you really pre-program yourself you start really feeling that you know what i am worthy of a million dollars a a fucking year and then you know this energy starts to like exude out and that and of course the manifest manifestation starts to exude out and you're in the vibration of the thing that you feel that you want right and that you finally you think that you're worthy of and then you give it to the god you give it to the universe and just how the law of attraction law of abundance works it just whips right back at you and it comes and it kind of comes at you like a boomerang 
but it comes through physical manifestations such as these opportunities that I mentioned before. So, you know, that's why I keep saying self-worth has a direct connection to material worth. That's why the second house connects with money and (laughs) self-worth. This is why they have a direct connection okay and so it's really really important for us during this new moon to not only of course ask for the material things that we want in our life but on even to ask for the emotional things that we want in our life like a high self-esteem and a and a stronger confidence but also ask to be a better manifester also ask to um you know f- have faith in not only in God but have more faith in yourself and the faith in God thing is really important I'm going to get into that for my patreons because keep that in mind patrons okay because that's that's something that we're going to be talking about a little later but you know it's really really important for you to kind of get deeper when you do your new moon intentions and when you ask for the things that you want to more come into your life because you you know you don't want to just get this one manifest this one thing right and then now you don't know how to manifest other things in your life with ease you have to do new moon intentions you want to get to the point where you can manifest things whatever the fuck you want to manifest it you know what i mean and so you have to kind of work on building yourself up so you can be in the vibration of receiving this thing and receiving other things that you want in your life too do you get what i'm saying y'all are you feeling me? <laughs> okay. Very, very important. So you have to keep this in mind. All right. Now with this new moon as well, it's in the second decant of Taurus, which is ruled by Mercury. Okay. Now this is the Virgoian side of Mercury, the introverted side of Mercury. And so you're, uh, this is like a, a amazing time to do new moon intentions because um, Virgo reminds me so much of new moon intentions, writing and writing down lists and being specific on what you want in life and using positive words, saying like, I wish. Don't say I wish or I want. You have to say, I am in the vibration of, or I have this, or I'm, I am this. You know what I mean? Like you can't say I want to be self-confident. I am self-confident. I want to have or I wish to have a million dollars a year. No, I have a million dollars a year or I am in the vibration of having a million dollars a year salary. Do you get what I'm saying? Like be in that vibe and then also, you know, I am a great manifester. I have faith in God. I have faith in the universe. I'm in the vibration of having the highest faith in God and the universe. Stuff like that positive words strong affirmations affirm you have to affirm this shit okay (laughs) but anyways you know this mercurial energy you know it's it's we're planning and we're process and we're creating processes and we're um creating procedures and routines to build our worth we're getting really specific We're getting super detail oriented on what we want and how to get what we want, right? But it doesn't, it doesn't need to be more practical than that unless you want to. Some people want it to be more practical. Some people want to, you know, do the work physically and that's fine. But honestly, you can manifest the things to come into your life if you really want to. And you can plan that by, again, doing daily affirmations as a part of a routine, as a part of planning. That's It's a great time to start doing that. <laughs> Positive affirmations at this new moon. You could actually, that could be one of the things you want to manifest, you know, is, hey, um, I want to be better at routines um, when it comes to my daily affirmations or with anything ever, you know, that's what I'm going to be saying shit, <laughs> but you know, this, you know, you get, we're going to be really like focused on the details of not only building our worth in the, an emotional and a material way, but also, um, after we, um, you know, feel this worthiness, like what we're going to do to sustain it, you know what I mean? What we're going to do in our everyday lives to, you know, build our worth ourselves, you know, when, when God and and our guides inspire us intuitively, like how can we get that message and then play it out in the earthly realm, you know? Because of course, you know, like, again, you have to remember I'm a Pisces North node and I've been really on my North node tip lately. 
not in my south note tip, which is Virgoian, you know, it's really important to find that balance of not just manifesting things into your life and, and figure to connect with God at a deeper level. It's also very important to, you know, not just manifest things in your life, but don't be of the earth and work out things and do physical work. Like that's really important. Like we're on earth for a reason. You can't just be totally on a spiritual tip completely on earth. I guess we are spiritual beings, but we are in the, we're on earth. We need to live earthly ways too. That's really important. And me kind of doing this like karmic readings that I've been doing lately really has been reiterating that to me, you know? So, oh, also check out that karmic reading. The karmic readings are expensive. I'm not going to front, but I be going in in my readings. You can ask my clients and, um, you know, if you got a mini karmic reading from me, in um a couple of months ago i basically have an expanded version of that available where i like i do it all <laughs> i'm do, i'm like doing cards i'm looking at like different asteroids i'm looking at your 12th house I'm looking at north north south no i'm going all over the place okay so just check that out if you're interested it's expensive yes but it's because it's a lot of energy work it's very costly for me energetically but anyways I've been noticing ever since like doing those like karmic type of readings that it's really important for us to, of course, be aware of our spirituality, be spiritual beings, but also be of the earth too, you know? So, um, I want to be sure that like, of course we want to be better manifestors and stuff, but you know, you don't want to just take, take, take spiritually and not work in the earthy realm too. Okay. Um, with me, like I can manifest a lot because in my past life, I've done the work. I'm a Virgo South node, you know, and I, it doesn't mean I'm supposed to neglect the earthly world. I'm still on earth. So I'm still, I'm still supposed to work a bit, but I can manifest more than do like practical type of shit because I've done it already, you know, in my past life. Are you feeling me? Hopefully you get what I'm saying. Anyway. So let's talk about these aspects happening. <laughs> and after that, after we talk about these aspects, um, what I'm going to do is just do a slight mention on what we are going to talk about with the aspect pattern, but I'm not going to get into it because that's for my Patreon folks. All right. So um, for my Patreon folks, too, I'm going to do other stuff and I'll explain that later. All right. So um, let's talk about these aspects. All right. Um, first thing I peep is this new moon energy because you know new moons both at the sun and the moon is both at 14 degrees um taurus in 11 minutes okay so the new moon is semi-sextile venus which is really interesting um i wanted to mention this because like i usually don't like talking about semi-sextiles but but semi sextiles happening, I'm like, ah, son, do I have to talk about this? I probably do. That's how I typically feel. So with this energy, um, it's really interesting because, you know, we are being pushed to want to build our self-worth and material worth because we have desires and we have these desires and we want them now. That's how we're feeling. With with Venus being in Aries, we have desires and we want these desires now. We feel like we are deserving of these desires because not only is Venus in Aries, it's in the second decan of Aries, which is ruled by the sun. And you know how the sun is. The sun's like, listen, I deserve this. I am the sun. <laughs> Give me. <laughs> I just, I want everything. And so we've been really on this vibe of like, you know what? I'm really trying to manifest things into my life. And I know I've been in this vibe and I've seen other, if you, I look down on Twitter, I've, I've, I've you know, I've, that's why I hang out mostly. And it seems like people have been on this deep ass manifest manifestation kick and, um, but people been filling my manifestation threads and shit like that like people really have these desires and they're impatient with it and they want to take action on it now and they're like okay um, I need to do something I need to do something now but it's sometimes it it feels like you feel a little blocked with trying to get the thing that you're trying to manifest or the actions that you're taking are not come like it's not working you can't take the actions or it's not coming through or things are being slowed down something slightly is kind of fucking it up because semi sextiles are not like the best energy but it's not the worst either and so um you know with this new moon 
being in Taurus, a fixed sign and an earth sign, which, you know, that means you ain't going nowhere. That energy is just stuck. <laughs> it's saying it's kind of trying to keep you calm and chill so you could create the stability and security within your life. It wants you to be stable and secure within your life right now so you can bring more stability and security within your life through manifesting. Okay, and so like that's the kind of energy that I'm feeling here is that, you know, we are wanting des- our, our, our desires, whether it's relationship, whether it's money, what is material things and we're wanting it now. Um, and it's the new moon and manif- it's a manifestation new moon, honestly. And so we're like, OK, how am I going to get it? it we, we have to chill. And the thing is, too, is that, you know. With the Aries energy being not only fire, but cardinal, you know, you're ready to take action and you're not being patient and you're not chilling and you're not having faith and letting God take care of it. And you're, the thing is, it's like a, a, a part of people not having faith and trust in God in the universe is a sense of, um, you know, not feeling worthy enough. And you feeling like if I don't get it now, am I, I'm never going to get it. If you felt worthy enough of getting the thing that you want, then you would know like it'll come in due time. I know I'm worthy of it. So I'm not even going to trip, you know? So you're kind of showing you being impatient is showing a sense of unworthiness. It's kind of showing like, you know what, if I don't get it now, then you know, it's going to be an issue and I'm not going to be worthy enough in the future, possibly. You, you know, you need to fix that. You need to fucking fix that. Okay? Fix that impatientness. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> this energy, the new moon energy is also sextile, the North Node, which is so amazing. Because the North Node's been wanting us to um, learn how to nurture ourselves and others better. Um, no, um, that's by like tending to our emotions, tending to our family, tending to our emotional trauma, generational trauma, um, just tending to our comfortability, comfortability, getting comfortable, um, spending family time, getting within our home, beautifying our home and all that. That's when North Node and, um, cancer has been pushing us to do. Um, uh, and with Taurus sex talent is energy. Um, it's great because both of these energies um, are very much about comfort and self-love and nurturing, but they go about it in different ways. You know, um, of course, North Node wants us to do it in a more emotional sense, but, um, you know, this new moon in Taurus wants us to feel stable and secure in the practical sense, in the earthly sense. Of course, to have some stability, security in an emotional way. Um, but to have up st- stability and security in a material way too. And so I feel like in this, in this energy is going to be teaching you how to settle yourself emotionally and tend to your emotions so you can be more self-worthy and work on your self-worthiness to get the material thing. So, you know, sextile energy is always an easygoing learning lesson. And, um, you know, I feel like with this new moon um, sextiling North Node, you're learning to um, bring more material things and manifest more material things into your life and, like, um, be more confident through um, nurturing yourself, tending to your emotions, tending to your family and stuff like that and learning from that experience, you know? So it's, um, pretty cool energy for sure. Um, the thing is too, is that this new moon is, um, of course, um, trining South Node. And so, um, you know, what's really interesting here is that like, we are all, kind of reflecting back over past situations even if it's connected to past life situations um we may not be reflecting it on a literal sense but in a um intuitive sense of like us and um kind of sensing how we were able to like gain authority and how we were able to work with authority and do we have did we have authority and stuff like that and that's you know of course a, a pretty um sensitive subject just in general authority overall um and with this new moon you know I feel like with this energy trining that when you gain a sense of self-worth you naturally gain a sense of authority you you already know your importance 
and um, you have this great sense of confidence just naturally because you know you're worthy of it. You're worthy of respect. You're worthy of authority. You're worthy to have control over your life. So it comes kind of together. And so this reflection, you reflecting on your authority will help you build yourself up to have more sense of more sense of a, a stronger sense of self-worth you get what i'm saying so it would be cool energy um this new moon is also sextile neptune um which makes this energy extra extra like um makes it extra possible to Manifest because you know Neptune is all about the unknown, all about the etheric world, spirituality, the astral realm, all that, right? Um, so are you know your manifest manifestation could definitely be on fleek, but you know it's funny because Taurus and, and <laughs> Neptune sextile, but they're so different from each other because like Neptune is like going all the way out there, and Taurus is being extremely, extremely grounded and um like extremely grounded it's kind of like um it's kind of like um I feel like that connection is more earthbound versus spirituality or spiritual bound type of energy more than Pisces Virgo honestly but I could see Pisces Virgo being this way too anyway like I was saying um with this energy I feel like you know, this is a great learning lesson for us, for the collective to, to know that I think it's, I think it's kind of teaching us about trust when it comes to manifestation, teaching us about, teaching us about trust when it comes to worthiness. Um, Cause the thing is, it's like when you have, again, like, it's like what I said before, when you have faith and trust, you know, you you know you're worthy of the thing that you want so you kind of just like I know I'm gonna get it I'm not worried about it I'm not gonna be impatient about it you know and then like this the Neptune and Pisces energy is extremely um connected to like the universe and God and how we speak to God and um the universe intuitively um and how I'm just trying to find a good way to say it and how honestly that how we like give our manifestations um the energy of our manifestations to god and to the universe to be answered and in order to kind of do that again you have to let go and let god you have to release it and um that's really really hard for (laughs) taurus energy to do that fixed um earth energy to do because the energy is so grounded it doesn't understand the the practicality of the unknown of that neptune pisces energy because it's it's not practical what's what's very what's neptune and pisces is so not connected to the earth (laughs) you know what i mean and so i feel like this energy generally is telling us and pushing us to not only have faith that are you know your manifestations and your wishes and prayers will be answered but to let go and let God and have faith in the universe. Um, wow, I just lost my thought. <laughs> Hold on. To to have faith and to let go and let God and, and, and trust it, that the universe will just... Just... I don't know. Wow, I just lost my thought, y'all. Shit. God damn it. <laughs> wow, that sucks. And it was a good one too. Damn it. Okay, let me think this over again. So I kind of feel like God damn it. I can't believe I forgot this shit. It just left my head. So let's let's go on to the new aspect to see if it comes back. It really left. But what I'm basically was trying to say though overall is that um, Pisces and Neptune, you know, you're not gonna, this energy sextile the new moon is telling you that you're not gonna understand how it works, how it happens, what God does to kind of pull the strings to make your wishes come true. And that's okay. 
it's the unknown we're not supposed to know we're supposed to be focusing on the earthly realm and our earthly experience right now so it's very important for you to kind of let go and let god and i think this energy is trying to have us there you go i got it not only let go and let god and trust in god but trust in our intuition too trust in our communication to God and to the universe and um, once we kind of do that a little bit more and kind of trust our uni- our, our intuition more I think it will build on our self-worth enough to make us feel like you know what I have faith I know things are going to work out in my favor and you know that just again strengthens and proves your self-worthiness and makes you be in a vibration of the thing that you want and you get it you know what I'm saying so I think that that energy is kind of like teaching us more about like re- helping us realize more that the unknown is the unknown and we're not going to fully ever get it. And that's just what it is. And it's honestly none of our business. Just let God do his work. <laughs> just let God answer his answer your prayers and, you know, you'll be good, you know. Um, and that's why I see with that energy. Um this new moon is trying um, Saturn retrograde, which I think is really interesting too. Um, with that, um, it's really cool because I feel like that. We, you know, of course, with Saturn retrograde, we are truly reflecting on um and especially with south node on there too oh my god like because you know they're like right next to each other during the new moon um almost they're tightly conjuncting like less than a, a degree away right and so we're truly reflecting on um situations in which we've had authority lost authority gained authority like all of the situations in our life and the authority figures within our life um how it built us up to the situation that we are now and are uh, we're reflecting on if we're okay with the authority that we have in our life do we feel like we have full control over our life and over our status our reputation our career um you know we're really like reflecting on this energy cooling down on this energy and understanding it in a deeper level so when the energy kind of pushes back direct we can actually start taking action in gaining the authority that we want in our life. Um, the first step of that is to feel worthy enough of this authority, right? <laughs> and new moon and Taurus, you can literally manifest that and make that happen. You know, um, of course, it's funny because it kind of goes into each other where in order for you to manifest that you need to feel worthy of yourself so it, it, you need to like put in your work too um which is very capricorn and saturn energy when you think about it so if you want to manifest more self-worthiness um you can you know of course you in order to manifest you need to have self-worth in the first place and so it's really important for you to do certain things such as like meditation saying daily affirmations and things like that to build your self-worth to fit raise your vibration so when you do ask for self-worth not only did you do your part but then god can kind of do their god can do their part too and um make it even stronger than what you built it up to be you get what i'm saying um so that's cool but with this energy trining though um you kind of thinking about your self-worth is gonna directly connect you to you reflecting on your authority and you're going to really come to some eureka moments um, when it comes to the of your the authority within your life and um you know how you grew from that how it held you back and what you need to do when saturn is direct to get on track in which you feel like you should be when it comes to authority and control over your life you get what i'm saying so <clears throat> excuse me um cooling from cool energy for sure um trines are always nice right um and you know i feel like just in general people are just gonna feel strong within themselves internally too because those energy is retrograde so internally we're gonna feel strong within ourselves and um that emotionally and um outwardly externally we'll have 
um, a strong sense of authority and control over whatever we want to do okay lastly this new moon is trying um pluto retrograde as well with Pluto being retrograde, we're really reflecting on a lot of things, reflecting on the transformation within our lives, we're reflecting on intimacy, we're reflecting on, um, you know, feeling empowered or the moments where we felt disempowered. And we're trying to understand, um, the collective's trying to understand the energy and how it that's connected to our authority and control as well, how that's connected to our status and reputation in recognition and career how like transformation intimacy and empowerment is connected to those things um and you know kind of similar to that Saturn energy self-worth is directly connected to um you know us feeling empowered us feeling like we have some sort of control um but also self-worth is connected to intimacy and transformation too um you know when I think about Pluto I think about shared worth um because of course intimacy it has to be connected with shared worth right and transformation needs intimacy it needs you know to transform you need two things to become one and that's how it transforms right and so you know It kind of reminds me of this like phrase that, you know, you are just as strong as your weakest link, you know, so you definitely need to have your great sense of self-worth so your other partner can have a great sense of self-worth and y'all can grow and be strong together. Um, It kind of reminds me of that. So with this energy, this is kind of reminding you that, okay, yes, you want to have a status within your intimacy You want to feel empowered within your status. You want to transform your status. Well, are you pulling your part? Are you doing your part? Do you feel worthy enough of that? You get what I'm saying? Do you feel worthy enough for this intimacy that you want from this, and the status of this intimacy that you want, or this empowerment or power that you want? You know, like, are you doing your part to get that? Do, or do you feel worthy enough to have these things in your life? You're really reflecting on this. And so it's really interesting because it's not going to, it's not tough. It's not a tough energy, but it's a real ass energy and it's going to flow easily. And is again, Eureka moments, just like Saturn. It's going to be like, ah, okay. I need to work on that. Oh, okay. That's cool. Like, and you're going to feel empowered and excited to work on this part of yourself. So it's, it's dope energy. And it's going to actually make you feel empowered internally and make you more open to discover your intimacy within yourself and make you a little bit understanding when it came to the transformations within your life and how it developed you to be a stronger person, to have a great sense of confidence and self-worth, or at least a stronger sense of confidence and self-worth. You know what I mean? So it's really, really cool energy for sure. Dope, dope, dope. Okay. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if, like, at this time you'll be reflecting on instances of you having shared worth and, um, you know, kind of even dialing back and connecting with people that you did in the past that you had shared worth with and, you know, healing the situations and trying it again, you know. Um, so it's this dupe, it's really dope energy for sure, Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm going to like stop it right here. Um, for my Patreon folks, I'm going to be talking, of course, about the fixed stars that are conjunct in the, um, the new moon. I'm also going to be talking about the aspect pattern. I see there's a T square happening and I'm going to be talking about that with my Patreons. And of course, I'm going to go through the moon in each house, the new moon in each house and what that means to you. Okay, so um, get ready for that, patrons, and the rest of y'all, um, join my Patreon, patreon.com slash astrodim, um, serving you the goodness. What I'm actually going to be doing this week that's new is, kind of new at least, <clears throat> excuse me, is that I'm going to do the astro tarot reading, general readings again. Um, so I'm going to give the full readings to the patrons. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can, you know, start off at $2 a month. Um, of course, 
And if you want to support me more, there are higher tiers. And um, you can get more stuff too, such as like my mini Twitter, uh, monthly Twitter readings. You can get like that like quicker you know because my patrons are my priority I give I give that to them like the first week of the month and the rest of y'all get it later you know so um there's that and then also um we do lives and stuff and of course I do new moon full moon readings but you get the full videos but yeah the astral tarot so I'm going to be doing that um they you know the patrons get the full video the rest of the public is going to get a shorter version of it I'm probably only going to talk about like the overall card the first house and maybe the second and I'm going to leave y'all alone maybe something like that but you know the good good readings the the rest of the reading is going to be for the patrons only okay anywho um i'll see y'all later come join my patreon if you want to be down or whatever and thank you for listening and i hope you guys have a beautiful new moon okay manifest do your new moon intentions okay ta-da tulu my peace (laughs)